Good day and welcome. Today, we continue our exciting series on cells, the basic unit of life. In this episode, we'll explore how cells work together to form tissues, organs, and systems in living organisms. Cells are specialized to perform specific functions. For example, muscle cells are designed to contract and enable movement. A group of similar cells working together forms a tissue, multiple tissues make up an organ, and organs function together in systems that keep the body running. Here's something to think about. Which organ system do you think is the most important for survival, and why? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. Stick around until the end for some thought-provoking questions to test your understanding. Challenge yourself and see how well you've grasped the material, it's a great way to boost your confidence. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you never miss our weekly uploads. Let's get started! All living things are made up of different types of cells. These cells come in various shapes and sizes, and each type has a specific function that helps the organism survive and function properly. In multicellular organisms, cells do not work alone, instead, they are organized into tissues, organs, and systems that work together to perform vital processes. Cellular differentiation and specialization are important for the growth and development of multicellular organisms. Growth occurs when the number of cells increases through a process in which a mature cell divides into two daughter cells. These cells grow and divide again, increasing the total number of cells. However, not all cells in a multicellular organism are the same. During the early stages of cell division, cells are not specialized. Enzymes guide cells to develop in ways that make them different from one another or specialized. This process, called differentiation, allows cells to become specialized for specific functions. In other words, cell differentiation is the process by which unspecialized cells develop into specific types of cells with distinct structures and functions. Once a cell is specialized, it can only perform a particular role, such as carrying oxygen, transmitting signals, or contracting for movement. This is why the body has different types of cells, each with a specific job. Specialized cells have unique structures that enable them to perform their roles efficiently. For example, skin cells form a protective barrier against germs, red blood cells transport oxygen, nerve cells, neurons, carry messages between the brain and the body, and muscle cells contract and relax to enable movement. Each type of specialized cell plays a crucial role in keeping the organism alive and functioning properly. Living organisms can be classified into two main types based on the number of cells they are made of, that is single-celled, or unicellular, and multicellular organisms. Cells are the basic building blocks of life, and they carry out essential functions that sustain an organism. While some organisms consist of only one cell, others are made up of many cells that work together in a coordinated way. Single-celled organisms, also known as unicellular organisms, consist of just one cell. Examples include microscopic organisms such as bacteria, amoebas, and certain types of algae. In these organisms, all life processes, including digestion, secretion, respiration, reproduction, and breathing, occur within a single cell. In contrast, multicellular organisms are made up of many cells and include macroscopic organisms such as humans, animals, and plants. These organisms are visible to the naked eye and have cells that differ in shape and function, making them specialized for specific tasks. The complex processes required for survival cannot take place in a single cell, so the cells must work together in an organized manner to ensure the proper functioning of the body.
As we saw previously, cells are the basic units of life, forming the foundation of all living organisms. A cell consists of a mass of cytoplasm and a nucleus, surrounded by a cell membrane. In plant cells, an additional cell wall provides extra support and protection. The contents of a cell include a large number of atoms of various types. These atoms combine to form molecules, which then group together to create organelles, the specialized structures within the cell. All living organisms are made up of cells, but the structure and function of these cells can differ. In the body, cells do not function individually but instead work in groups. They are organized based on their shape and function. A group of cells that perform the same function forms a tissue. For example, in humans, muscle tissue and nerve tissue each perform specific roles. A group of tissues makes up an organ. An organ is a structure made up of different types of tissues working together to perform a particular function. The human heart, for example, consists of muscle, nerve, and support tissue, all of which work together to pump blood throughout the body. When different organs work together, they form a system, also known as an organ system. Each system is responsible for a specific function necessary for survival. For example, the digestive system includes organs such as the stomach, liver, pancreas, small intestine, and large intestine, all working together to digest and absorb food. An organism is made up of multiple organ systems that function together to maintain life. In humans, there are seven essential systems. The digestive system, which processes food. The circulatory system, which transports blood and nutrients. The respiratory system, which enables breathing and gas exchange. The musculoskeletal system, which provides structure and movement. The excretory system, which removes waste from the body. The nervous system, which controls body functions and responses. The reproductive system, which allows for reproduction. Together, these levels of organization, from cells to tissues, organs, systems, and ultimately the entire organism, ensure that life processes function smoothly and efficiently. What are stem cells? Stem cells are undifferentiated cells that have not yet developed into specialized cells. Stem cells have two main characteristics that make them unique, replication and differentiation. Replication means stem cells can divide and replicate, like making photocopies of themselves. Differentiation means stem cells can transform into specialized cells such as muscle cells, nerve cells, or organ cells. Because of these abilities, stem cells can be used to repair damaged tissues and organs, and even create new ones. They have the unique ability to transform into almost any type of cell in the human body. This characteristic makes them essential for growth, repair, and medical treatments. What are the sources of stem cells? Human stem cells can be harvested or collected in different ways. Firstly, embryonic stem cells are harvested from human embryos during early development. This is the best source of stem cells because they can turn into any cell type. However, harvesting them destroys the embryo, leading to ethical and moral concerns. Secondly, adult stem cells are found in the bone marrow, blood, and adipose or fat tissue of an adult. These can be used in treatments for conditions like leukemia. Stem cells have also been discovered in the brain, skin, hair, eyes, and dental pulp. However, adult stem cells are more limited in their ability to specialize compared to embryonic stem cells. Thirdly, umbilical cord stem cells are harvested from the blood in the umbilical cord when a baby is born. These cells are easier to collect and less likely to be rejected in medical treatments. Stem cells are used in various medical treatments and research including Regenerating damaged tissues and organs, for example, repairing heart tissue after a heart attack. 
developing treatments for diseases like Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and diabetes and treating injuries to the spinal cord, which may help paralyzed patients regain movement. While stem cell research holds promise, it also faces challenges. For example, stem cells in older adults may be damaged due to disease, making them unsuitable for medical use. The number and quality of stem cells decrease with age, limiting their effectiveness. Stem cell research, particularly the use of embryonic stem cells, has sparked major ethical debates. Ethical concerns refer to moral questions or issues about whether something is right or wrong based on values, principles, and beliefs. In stem cell research, ethical concerns focus on the following. Firstly, the destruction of human embryos. Some believe that an embryo is a human life and, destroying it for research is equivalent to murder. Every human begins as an embryo, so destroying it is seen as morally and ethically wrong. Secondly, there is fear of inhumane practices. Some worry that advances in stem cell research could lead to e-embryo farms, the creation of embryos just to harvest stem cells. Stem cells is also believed to lead to cloned babies for medical experiments. However, there are supporters of stem cell research. People who support stem cell research argue that embryos are not fully developed humans and cannot be given the same moral status as a baby or adult. They also argue that many lives can be saved, even if a few embryos are destroyed and that he knowledge gained from research can lead to groundbreaking medical treatments. Stem cell research holds great potential for curing diseases, repairing organs, and advancing medical science. However, ethical concerns and scientific challenges must be carefully considered. That is all for today. Before we conclude, please attempt answering the following questions before the answers pop up. You can pause the video as you go. Let us meet again next time as discuss further on systems in the human body. Be sure to check the link in the description for more. Do not forget to like and subscribe to that you do not miss our weekly updates. Otherwise, thank you for watching and keep well.